saying that the reason Kevin was um, so good at his work is, is that he placed family, community, and his relationship to the universe God first, and his work was to support that process. He didn't place his work first. And I think a lot of people, um, you know, I mean, it really, your work supports you in what you want to do in your life. And so I think that when you place, you know, when you place the power of the universe and you place the connection to spirituality at the center of it and you just trust that the rest is given to you, it always unfolds so beautifully. So it's a good right. story. Yeah, right? And that's, that's our emphasis. And it is about responsibility and accountability. And, you know, and you and I had a long conversation today. And we, oh, we um, talked about how, how many similar pieces we have in our thinking. And then that creates um, the affinity, the reality, and the communication between two individuals. And then that's where we begin our conversation. And then we find out that we're connected in other ways. And it's interesting to find common ground. And I think that's why stories are so important and yeah. allowing the stories to unfold. And there's a balance. Which is you've got to give and take, share, um, be willing to take feedback, and uh, give feedback, you know. Yes. So I like the, I like what we're doing today. I, okay. I'm a little bit uh, unsure where to go because usually we have a topic. Somebody's making a lot of noise. If they can mute, that would be great. Uh, we usually have a topic so that I can wrap my right mind around. So now my mind is going like I'm trying to track everybody what they're saying, and it's like it just comes. From, it's interesting. It's just like. Whatever's on somebody's mind, the top of their mind. Here's this story, here's this story. So when it comes to my turn, it's like, well, what story do I have? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> life is long. Oh, did you have a drop? Mm. No, I'm still here. I'm still okay. here. I'm not sure what's going on. There's okay. a lot of noise. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, it was like uh, somebody was running a marathon or something with the phone in their hand. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, um, so I, I like you to give me a topic. So, what do we want to talk about now? Okay. Um, so, tell me what it's like to live on the island. What's it like to live in paradise? Well, Maui is a very interesting culture. It's. Uh, about 40% white, uh, about uh, 35%, uh, there's there's Poly- Hawaiian native Polynesian mix, there's uh, Japanese, um, Chinese, Asian mix, so, you know, there's, there's the Islanders and then there's the Asian culture, there's the, the white culture. And then uh, there's about one half of one percent, what we would call African American black. So I get really confused about all the identities because this is such a mixed uh, culture here, and so it's like uh, I guess the people on the mainland are going, "What what race are they?" And I'm just going, "Wow, this is just the world, right?" It's like everybody different colors. <laughs> And uh, the mixed couples are just more common. Even when I was on Oahu, which is predominantly Asian, uh, Polynesian, I mean, the Pacific Islands are mixed, uh, it was very unusual to see a couple of the same race. And we're just okay. so used to mixing. Well, I came here in 1993, and wow. I escaped uh, the East Coast. So, <laughs> and I looked. I love my home, uh, but it was it was killing me. So I, I realized it was either leave or die. So I left all the cold weather, and uh, there's somebody making noise again. Okay. Uh, so when I arrived here, this is a hippie culture, okay. and things tend to be about 20 years behind the mainland. <laughs> so when I arrived here, there was no there were no Walmart, no Costco. Uh, they did have a a different store. It wasn't Lowe's or Home Depot. It got bought out. So since I'd been here, all those things were built. Kmart was there. Uh, okay. There were mom and pop stores, real mom and pop stores, Ho-Oko's and, and all these uh, 
So I've, I've just seen this huge, and I've been here 23 years, so it's just changed massively. When my, wife, my husband started coming here in the 60s, there were only about 30,000 people full-time. There's about 130,000 people full-time. Wow. And then being in an island, you have um, people that are peripatetic or, you know, about a third of the population is probably tourists. So we don't have any tourists right now, or not much. Uh, the planes aren't coming in, and uh, even inner island travel has been limited because of COVID. And we're really uh, afraid of getting it because we don't have very, we have one hospital, and I think it's like 200 beds. So if it goes through our 130,000 plus population, it, it will pretty much, uh, you know, you'd be You'd be having to stay at home or with your health care in the parking lot, <laughs> if you could get in the parking lot. It's just uh, it's not something anybody can wrap their head around what these big cities have. You know, you I go to California frequently. I have in-laws that live in uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, and so okay. I'm very familiar with that part of the world. And, uh, you know, you have a lot of places to go. <laughs> But, you know, you pretty much, uh, you can get around the island in one day, and that's my world. It's very small. Okay. And so, and it's, it's, um, so it's a hippie culture. So when I came here, Maui was the tantra capital of the world. I'm not sure what all this noise is about. Let me see if it's my fan. Hold on. Maybe my fan's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it wind? <laughs> so when I, I came know. here, what we used to do is go to Little Beach. And Little Beach is on the other side of the island, and it's a place where people come from all over the world and get naked. And they they have a drumming circle, and they dance to the drums as the sun goes down. And literally, the the whales and the dolphins come so they play didgeridoos, and they jump in the water, and people applaud when they jump. And they're attracted to, to everybody on the beach who are singing and playing drums. And um, so, But I haven't gone there in a, in a while um, because it's, it's quite a journey to get there. You have to climb up over this rocky cliff, and sometimes the, the waves are washing in. You have to time it to get up <laughs> Uh, the wave doesn't wash out the sea. It's just kind of a, quite, quite the adventure. But everybody in the world comes there. When you, when you walk down the beach, you can hear all these languages. Because people like to come to a tropical island and get naked. So that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Um, so um, I think it's interesting because um, in Western culture, when we um, encounter somebody who has difficulties, we sit down and we want to talk to them and we want to listen to their story and we want to give them comfort and clarity about their story. But if you go into Africa, the way that people work through their pain is through the celebrating of life and they dance and they, they play music and they, they, they see that as the way to heal their inner pain. And, and so it's a cultural, it's a cultural difference. And it is, I mean, people went there uh, to Africa to listen to the stories of what had happened to the people. And they were very surprised that the people didn't want to talk because they said, well, this is how we work things out. Go ahead and tell me your story. And the people would say, no, that's not how we work it out. We take and we (laughs) dance and we listen to music. And so there is something powerful about a drum circle. It puts you into an altered state. It's a a moving meditation. And as the Mm -hmm. result of that moving meditation, you go into an altered state. And there are, you know, I mean, there's, you know, religious processes centered in that of the ecstatic dance. And, right. And so the movement creates the altered state, which creates the freedom, which creates the integration, which creates the connectedness. And so um, it is a different way to celebrate life and to move through pain. But each culture approaches these issues differently. And so when we tell these stories, 
that's how we find out how we're connected and how we're connected to our life view or how we believe life should be. So I happen to really think that Africa is just just this incredibly beautiful culture. Uh, And uh, I went into Africa and I went into Rwanda. And when I was in Rwanda, we went into the Congo. And it is just such a peaceful, uh, quiet uh, people that are very humble, very hospitable, and very much about the generosity of sharing through music and dance. And what a beautiful, beautiful ancient civilization. And Rwanda speaks, um, one of their languages, Swahili, and Swahili is considered the most perfect language. And we know one of the um, proverbs, and one of their proverbs is to speak softly and carry a big stick. Oh, yes, yes. There's another part to that proverb, and it always eludes me. But uh, you listen to the Romans and the centurions, their saying was um, guilt, um, contempt prior to investigation is the formula for ignorance. And so when you listen to the proverbs of a country and their religious and uh, their separation from one another and how they create that is through their proverbs, how their thinking is quite unique. But there's so many ancient civilizations alive today, and it is really a great thing to connect through these stories. And so when you tell me the story that you go out onto the island, you go to the sacred point on the beach, and you do this dance, and you honor nature, and the dolphins and the whales join in, what a perfect story. I mean, what a really perfect story (laughs) of connecting, right? That's about connecting. Uh Uh-huh. Right. So, so we, yes, and it, so, so we, we would do intensive therapy all week with tantra school, and people think, oh, tantra, let's have sex, but you can't get to the sex where you work out all this stuff because it, it's a it's a long process, and so we would take people deep into their processes, and then we would start talking about their sexual issues, and and then people would have a party about that, and then the final party was. Um, Saturday was a party at our, our house. It's Sunday, you wrap it up with Little Beach, and it's close off to You don't have to go there and get naked. But um, so that was a, that was a good uh, psycho spiritual process for people to go through. We did that for 10, 15 years. Um, wow. We may pick that up again. I don't know. We're getting old, though. <laughs> but uh, we might pick it up again. But another thing is, you can go to these, all the towns. When I. But I hit land in here, I go, what is this, the Wild West? It all looked like Western towns. Paia, they've got those little storefronts, and they're, one, they're two big, two stories high, and flat roof, and, and, uh, and, then what, and they're, you know, the two-lane streets. You try to go through town, and your traffic is backed up for miles. But if you go to um, Paia, and there's a health food store, and they, in every little town they have a health food store, so there's mm-hmm. a health food who, you know, hippie community, and um, you could see Steven Tyler walking down the street, and somebody will be playing a, a guitar on the street, and he'll come over and start playing with them. <laughs> so that's the kind of, you know, we have these celebrities that just walk around, and, um, you know, they want to come to Maui and hang out on the beach and go to the restaurants, but they're they're all relaxed. There's lots of paparazzi type things, and I think some of you are telling a paparazzi story earlier, yep. and, and it's just like, you know, you kind of like water, oh, oh, well, he looks familiar, oh, that's, oh, Stephen Tyler, you know, whoever it is, right, and you go, well, hi, how you doing? So it's not a lot of uh, celebrity celebration, but we used to have George Harrison here before he died, and and um, we have Woody, Willie Nelson, like, he goes to, to the, um, the theater, they have one where they play the alternative kind of cultural movies once a week on Wednesday, and you're just there to another Wednesday, and here comes Willie Nelson. Hey, I just want to say hi to everybody. I, I really like this movie tonight, and I hope you enjoy it. And you go, okay, Willie Nelson is here. Goodbye. <laughs> so uh, that's what's nice about culture. And then uh, one last thing is that if you want to um, go to these alternative churches, there's like the Temple of Peace, um, and they have all these alternatives. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful alternative community. Nobody would understand that unless they come here. 
and then you go, oh, okay, I get it. It's, so when I hear all the troubles of the world, right, you guys on the mainland, it's like, 